Today I'm going to show you how to configure and use our CSV collector. And some of the things I'm going to be explaining today can be found um, on our community page. So if you go to helpcenter.canarylabs.com and you can scroll down to knowledge base, I'm going to click on version 21. And this is in the data collection. It's a CSV collector article. So some things I'm going to be referring to can be found in here. Mainly it's um, two configs that we have to uh, create or configure uh, this SAF import service.config and the SAF import.config. Um, and so uh, you can get examples from this page uh, to paste into the config files that you create. So there's the one for the service itself and another one for um, the CSV file that you're going to try to consume. Um, so after you install it, so that would be if you select the CSV um, collector from the install, uh, you're going to get uh, travel and program files, canary. In the collectors folder, here's our CSV collector. Okay. And so here is that first config file, SAF import service.config. And so by default, this is blank. Um, I've already configured mine. Uh, so if I open this up, okay, you're gonna have essentially two parameters, an interval parameter, uh, which is uh, in seconds. So every 10 seconds, uh, the service is checking uh, your input directory or directories. You know, you can have more than one. And so I'm gonna be showing uh, two today and um, Again, the, this, this file is blank, so you have to go and create this, and that's where you can use the, the community page. You can copy and paste that in and then configure it from there. Um, but essentially, that's all there is to configure for the service itself is which directory do you want the service to monitor uh, and where you're going to be dropping in these CSV files for us to consume. And so I'm going to show you two examples today, uh, two different types of formats. So we have like a row-based format in a column-based format, okay? Um, so that's that file is actually found in this um, directory, in, in the collector CSV directory. Um, and then you can see that we're gonna monitor these two input directories. And so if I travel there, CSV import, and then uh, if I just click on one of these, so I've created this SAF import.config in this directory and also in the row based format one. And so I actually have those open. So this would be my uh, column based format that I'm trying to consume. And so if I show you that file, this is what it looks like. And we would consider this to be column based because starting in column C, uh, we have a column for each tag that we're going to eventually consume. And so I'm just going to step through uh, the different parameters in here. Um, there's over 30 different parameters to choose from. Some are more common than others, um, but uh, you can get a, a full list of these. If I go back to that page uh, at the top, you can grab it here. It says PDF. Um, or you can also grab it within the, that same directory uh, where the CSV collector is installed. You, you will also see this PDF in there. And so I, I have that listed here. Um, and it gives a brief explanation of all the different parameters you can use to match the format uh, of the CSV file that you're trying to consume. And so there's also an example at the bottom there as well. So uh, you can use that to uh, configure your CSV files you're going to consume. All right, so let me go back here. All right, so our input delimiter, first parameter, right, that's a comma separating our values. And the second one is this use file name as branch, we set that to true. So um, we're actually, the file name of the CSV is going to be used as a branch name within the tag name. Um, so I have down, defined down here data set is step. 
So you think in the historian, it's going to be step dot uh, the file name of the CSV and then your tag name. So you can use the actual file name as a branch within the full tag name. Okay, so go back up one level. So we're sending it to the local host. Uh, this is where you would specify the machine name, you know, wherever your historian is located, where you're pushing the data to. And you could have multiple historians here. Um, doesn't it just have to be one. Um, you can multiplex and send it to multiple historians. All right, the data set I already mentioned. Um, so we are going to create a data set called step that this data is going to be uh, sent to and stored in. Then we have header count. So if I look at this uh, file behind me, so header count zero, so it's going to start reading the very first row of this file because we have information up here we want. This is where the tag names are stored in the very first row. So we don't want to skip any rows to get uh, to read this file. And so um, that is set to zero. If you don't include the header count uh, within this config file, then it would just, um, default to zero. And then next we have a subheader count. So this is essentially telling me, okay, after the header, skip this many rows to then get to the data. So this second row up here uh, isn't useful information for us. So we're going to read the header and then we're going to skip down to row three here um, to start consuming that data. And then we have a timestamp offset. So uh, this would be column one. So whenever you're thinking of the CSV file, that column A here, this would actually be zero. So if zero, column B would be column one. This is where we're gonna grab that timestamp. So zero, one, two, three, and so on. All right, so timestamps in column one, and then the actual tag names, the tag offset starts in column two. So zero, one, and C is two. And then we have that through star. So it's indefinitely going to the end of whenever these rows or whenever these columns um, end. Uh, that's why we're using this uh, syntax here to through that asterisk. All right, so that will pick up all of our tag names. And then we're going to keep the, the CSV file after we process it. So in case we need to uh, use it again. So that is set to true. And then here's the directory that we're going to store it in after we've processed it. So it's the subfolder of that column-based format directory. And then we're going to auto-create the data set um, whenever we uh, log the data. So it's going to automatically create this step data set for us. We don't have to go into the Canary admin and create that ahead of time. Obviously, if this was set to false, then you would have to go in and pre-create the data set and then log to it. Uh, the last one in here is allow inserted data. Um, so uh, if that is set to false and it's reading the CSV file, if it comes to a timestamp that is prior to something that has already been logged, uh, that data would be ignored and would be thrown out. So the inserted data allows you to essentially, you know, historically write data into the historian. Um, it doesn't have to follow a sequential order in, in, in that sense or a chronological order. You know, the timestamps could move backwards. It could insert um, data, okay? So this is for a column-based format, which I have here. And then I have one for a row-based format. So let me bring that file up. This looks a little bit simpler. Okay. So again, it's row-based because our tags uh, are in these rows. They're not going column by column. So that's why we consider this to be a row-based format. All right, um, same input delimiter. Uh, you can use, as I've seen semicolons, you could use a tab as a delimiter. So if you're using it, if, if your values were tab delimited, uh, that would be a uh, backslash T if you're doing tab delimited but it is a comma. Okay, so again, I'm just sending it to my local historian. I'm gonna skip the first row and start reading data on the second row because um, 
this isn't valuable information at the top. Um, so then the timestamp offset is in column zero, tag name, column one, and the value in column two. Zero, one, two. Uh, you'll notice that we don't have a defined data set parameter like we did in this other one. So what, what this will do, it's going to use the first branch in the tag name and it's going to use FB and use that as the data set. So this is going to create an FB data set in the historian and then the tag name will be anything that's coming after the dot. Okay. And then these uh, parameters are the same as the other ones. We're going to keep the process file, we're going to store it here, and then we're going to auto create that FB data set. And then if there are any inserts, uh, we'll allow any inserted data. And uh, yeah, we'll just, we're going to leave that as true. Okay. So uh, anytime you make changes to these config files, whether it's for the service itself, or if it's uh, for the um, config files for the, the CSV formats, um, you're going to want to restart your CSV collector service to pick up those changes. And so these have already been saved. I don't need to restart my service. Those should all be good. Okay, so I'm going to close out of these files so that they can be consumed. Okay. I'm going to bring up admin. So here is CSV collector. Okay, it's showing you which directories it's monitoring, if they're enabled or not. If I scroll over, I could disable them over here. And so this one, we already have that predefined data set name. So that's why we see this appearing. And then this is really dependent on what is in a CSV file as to which data set um, is going to be created. Okay. So if I open up a file explorer, I'm going to have to move these. So I'm going to cut, paste it in this directory. And again, that it's checking this directory every 10 seconds for a new file to be consumed. And eventually we're gonna see this disappear. Okay, I'm gonna do that for the other one. Let's go to row based format. I've already got it in my process folder, so I'm just gonna drop it back in. So they've been consumed and we check the process folder. There they are. Now if I go and bring up my admin, so you can see the last file that was consumed, how many tags, the number of TVQs that were in uh, those files. And let's actually go and look at the historian itself. Okay, so there's that FB data set. Those are the tags within that file. And so you'll notice that these timestamps are from uh, January 2nd. So we don't actually, it doesn't go into the January 2nd file. We, we consumed them today on August 11th. So that was the only data we had for this data set. So um, now if we had more data already created in this data set, you know, if we already had data that went back to January 2nd, we would insert, and we had that flag set to insert is to true, and we would try to insert it back in that daily file. But um, uh, this was the day it was, we processed it, and so we created that uh, daily file. Um, that's where the data resides. Okay, and that's the other one was step. Okay, so there's, there was the file name, right? That's prepended on front of the tag. That's, that's one of the branches. 
I mean, yeah, this is a March 20th timestamp, but it's going in uh, today's file. So this added good quality here would indicate that this is an inserted value. So more than likely, um, there was probably multiple um, values that had the same timestamp. Uh, maybe they only had to the minute and they didn't have a second. So there's probably multiple values that were all going to this 429 timestamp. And so uh, probably got overwritten. So you wanna make sure that the timestamps are, are good and, and, and they look accurate. So I would say most likely there was probably multiple values that had a 429 timestamp. They didn't have any seconds specified. So this was probably the last, this 2.124 is probably the last value that was associated with 429. So that was the last one we put in there. And which um, leads into another discussion in that, you know, we have customers that will use the CSV um, collector to overwrite values as a, uh, an option um, that you can insert and overwrite a pre-existing value provided that the timestamp is exactly the same. And so you get this added uh, good quality in that scenario. Okay, so that is uh, basically it. There's two config files that need to be uh, configured. The one for the service right here, and then one for uh, the actual directory that you're monitoring. Uh, so both of those would be configured and you can grab those examples of those um, on this page here. So there's the service one and then Here's the one for uh, the CSV config. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful to you and thanks for watching.